Hey there guys, Andrew Maximoff here from artisaverb.info and tonight I have for you a little follow-up to my previous PBR tutorial but this time I wanted to do something less theoretical and I mean it actually doesn't get less theoretical than this the model that you see in front of you you're very free to download and sort of you know look at it as an example and reverse engineer some of the material work Right now what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna go through some of the map types that you might be producing for PBR textures and give you a few more or less practical hints on how to put those together. All of that is also available in written form on my website. Okay, so bundled with a Marmoset scene, which is by the way a great piece of software, you also have the FBX file and you have the four textures that we're going to be using and the first one is obviously going to be the albedo. Uh, talking about albedo, right, the first thing that I like to mention to people is that it's not just a rename diffuse, it's a sort of a bit of a different concept. The biggest difference between albedo and diffuse is that diffuse actually was just an image that is displayed on your 3D surface, whereas albedo is a physical property that just describes the amount of light that would bounce off your surface in sort of neutral lighting conditions. So what does that mean? It means minimizing ambient occlusion, it means minimizing specular contribution, and it means trying to get some neutral lighting. But once again, to be more practical, some studios do eradicate all kinds of AO from their maps but not all, right? It very much depends on your engine and how well of a screen space ambient occlusion you got going on there or if you have some self-reflection and all of that stuff. So basically at the end of the day, if you do want to put some ambient occlusion, feel free to do so as long as it looks good and you've tested it under different lighting conditions. Uh, one thing very important to remember is that if you are using metallic masks, that means that your albedo is actually going to be your specular texture and whenever you adjust that, you're actually messing with reflectance values. So you got to keep that in mind. Once again, coming back to removing specular contributions, sometimes you can just do that in Photoshop, so it doesn't mean that every single texture shot that you take has to be with a polarized filter and all of that stuff. And once again, coming back to neutral lighting, it's a great theoretical step, right? But unless you're at a place that's willing to invest heavily into spending the time and buying the photography equipment and all of that, to actually, you know, be producing your own source material for the textures, you're probably not gonna get, you know, perfectly shot neutral source texture material. So what you do is you just test it under different lighting condition. Uh, as long as it works, then it's perfectly fine because that's the, the whole point of having neutral lighting textures. Just, you know, make sure that you choose a pretty different lighting scenarios for your previews so you can be sure that the material doesn't only look good in, like, say, just daylight scenario or a night scenario. Specular textures are a bit more of a pain in the ass in this generation, firstly because most of your dielectrics are going to be in a very very short range from zero, uh, in, I mean in terms of brightness, from zero to 0 0.08 in linear space, which is 8% of the visual range that you get, and then most of your metallics are going to be starting somewhere around 60 probably. The other problem is that you're sort of going to be playing that weird game of tug and pull where you're working in two maps at the same time, your specular and your albedo, because due to the energy conservation laws, the higher the reflectance of your surface, the more invisible your albedo becomes. And this is less convenient than actually working with a metallic mask where it literally takes a few seconds to produce and then you're back in your albedo texture where, you know, all the action is happening. I mean, your albedo and your roughness. Then also this allows you for more optimization because some objects don't even have metallic materials in them, which allows you to just use a constant instead of a texture and that way you can drop another texture lookup, which is always nice. Most of the engines that you'll probably come by are going to be going with metallic textures, uh, at least from what I've seen so far. It actually is exactly as it sounds. If something is metal, it's white. If it's not metal, it's black on the texture and that's it. The only thing you have to remember here, the biggest hint I can give you, is not to fudge it. Seriously, you'd be surprised how many people are trying to put a little bit of that metallic in there just to give it some reflectance, and that never really works out well. You'd rather use your roughness instead, and if it's not metallic, just keep it black. 
come into a rough nest right now. Once again, there's, you know, a kind of two opposite maps or map names that you might have for the same thing, which is Roughness and Glossiness. A lot of artists tend to prefer Glossiness because they think that it's more logical to have brighter pixels representing brighter reflection, but that is not necessarily the case. Sometimes, more often than you would think, you can have a perfectly dark Glossiness map and still get a brighter reflection than you would if you have it perfectly white. Nothing sort of to hang on to from that previous generation mindset. That's why I think that roughness is better because you change the way people think of it and it's as as logical as it gets. You know, if it's white, it's rough. The reflection is blurry and that's about it. If it's not rough, it's super smooth and reflection is very crisp. Unlike albedo and metallicness, which most of the time can be pre-measured or pre-dictated by some kinds of conditions, roughness is the map where artists get to let loose, because here it's totally your choice. Pretty much every type of material can have all kinds of roughness variation. And also while thinking about adding ambient occlusion, I mean in metallic you wouldn't do that at all, but say for albedo you might from time to time, but it's kind of tricky at the end of the day, in an ideal scenario you wouldn't want to do that. But with roughness you actually totally can, because that's kind of an artistic choice, right? It just helps you communicate that say in your recesses uh, where the EO is, your surface would just be perfectly rough, for example, and the parts that are sort of protrude more are more brushed, which, which would make sense, so it's totally up to you. And what do you know, that's about it. Normal maps didn't change one bit, which is which is surprising considering how much time we spend in the transition from the previous generation. And yeah, that's pretty much it, folks. Once again, feel free to check out the Cerberus model that you see rotating in front of you right now. Feel free to take a look at the textures, play around with it, maybe texture it on your own if you don't want to bother with, you know, producing a mesh. I might also supply just raw ambient occlusion and normal map for you. And yeah, thank you very much for your time. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what awesome art you can create. That was Andrew Maxima for you. Feel free to subscribe on Facebook or on YouTube. And thank you very much for your time, folks. Keep it pretty.